What's up everybody? Welcome to the life of a board gamer. My name is Daniel and today we are starting a new series of videos on this channel. We are going to go on the adventures of Robin Hood. Now I'm going to play this one solo. So it's the easiest way to be done in a decent amount of time because you know sometimes life happens and you can't film regularly then the things drag and stuff like that. And I really really want this to be out as soon as possible. So today we are playing an introductory game. Uh, basically everything will be explained. I did a little bit of pre-setup, just a little bit, but uh, as the game says, you learn as you go. So you are going to learn with me as we go together on this adventure, how the game plays and what it does. And uh, yeah, that's basically that. We're going to try something different this time. There's not going to be a two setup camera, like one for the board, one for the me, because uh, the board is really big and I'm probably going to need the whole screen for it and I really want you to see it as clearly as possible, as nicely as possible. So I'm going to move things around a little bit and uh, then we are going to continue once we switch to the top camera. Okay, so basically this is a pre-setup that I've done. Uh, as you can see the board comes as like a puzzle thingy, you can disassemble it like this and uh, you will assemble it each time. I am going to assemble it each time we play it. And uh, I'm not sure if you can see, but you can take out some stuff and you know, flip them over and then something will appear over here. But for now, like there's nothing over here. It may appear as we play the game. So I think this is all reversible once you are done with it. But of course, do expect some spoilers if you plan on playing this game. Uh, all I read so far is this uh, welcome to the Sherwood forest little thingy and it tells you what characters you need to take It explains you how you move your characters because there are no set fields to move on as you can see But what you do is if let's say for example I am standing right over here as it shows in an example and I want to move up to this carriage over here and talk to this guy for some uh, for some reason I have two different options I can like run go really fast but it's not they say it's not usually good to use this to save them for some reason that we are still going to learn what they are but uh, what I can do is I can use these like normal movements and I can just put them like so and let's say like this and I put my guy over here now it's only it only matters that I touch the previous miniature as close as possible I can align it like this or I can just go diagonally to take out more space to maybe reach this guy and as you can see I haven't touched the rim of the base so I have not reached him I can't interact with him but basically when I'm done with my movement I'll just remove these and now I'm over here next time I start moving I can go over here or maybe if I change my mind I can go up here on this uh, part of the road or woods or whatever you want want to call it but I can't go over this castle thing so I need to go around it if possible so I need to go something like this and maybe I want to run because I want to get to somewhere like this 14 number for example and I'm gonna put it over here then I'm going to remove remove all of these and I am up here of course I will try to move these guys as less as possible but it's probably going to happen then I'm going to nudge them and move them uh, to a place where they shouldn't be and I, I really don't care because this is a playing solo so I can do whatever I want uh, now I am playing against the game I have to win the game uh, again, again to win against the game and we are going to go through this uh, booklet we are going to read some chapters uh, this pamphlet instructed us to go on a page 8 and if you thought that my spoken English is bad wait until you hear me read this one because it's awful but uh, it is what it is I will not show you uh, much of it I'm just gonna go through the pages I'm gonna keep them off the screen just because uh, if uh, you maybe see something but maybe you want to play this game afterwards so I'm going to uh, keep it as spoiler free as possible okay so uh, we are at chapter one the escape so we are now officially starting the game. So chapter one, the escape. England in the year of our Lord, 1193. The guard showed little John forward. The chain he had been tied up with rubbed against his wrists. Through, 
Through his hood, he recognized the silhouette of the approaching gallows. Now, uh, that was the little intro, and now it tells us what it, we, we need to do. Now flip over the oval tile on the game board with the number one. So we have to find oval tile with the number one. And luckily we have all these tiles numbered back here, which are way easier to find. And we have a tile number one over here. So we're gonna flip it on this side and it has a guard now. Now the guard is in the in, in this uh, courtyard or whatever it is. Uh, the number one in the courtyard. This is the guard. Now lay one of Little John's standing figures on the guard. Now these figures, of course, I forgot to mention. These are Little John figures and these are Robin Hood figures. So Little John is over here lying down because the guard struck him. Uh, and now I continue reading. His heart was racing and his mind started to wander. Is this the end? Is this just the punishment for all my deeds? Or is there still a way to escape? Now flip over the beggar tile 110 before the castle wall to the left of the gate. 110 beggar tile, we need to flip it. And I just decided to cut my nails today or yesterday. So this is going to be a really tough thing to do. And the beggar is gone. He's not here anymore. That's weird. Uh, and the straw wagon tile, 214 straw wagon tile 214 where is it where is the tile before the castle straw wagon oh it's here straw wagon. so we flip this one so they are gone they are not here so they are not visible that's what book says okay flip over the wagon wheel tile 180 top left in the forest Top left in the forest, 180, wagon tile, 180, where I, okay, so it's here. So it doesn't show anything, of course. And we also need to flip a merchant tile, 120, bottom left in the forest, so they're not visible too. 120 merchant, where is the, okay, so here it is. A merchant, 120. Now he is also not visible to us. We can't see him. He is like John Cena. Robin Hood places one of his standing figures on the oval tile 11, top left in the forest. So on a tile 11, to oval tile 11, so it's here, top left in the forest. So Robin Hood starts over here. And uh, Maid Marion and Will Scarlet, we are not playing with those, so we are not going to use those characters. Each player taking part two, uh, taking part now, not two, but now, each player taking part now throws the wooden disc of their color into the bag, throw the red disc into the bag too. Okay, so we need to throw in our disc and uh, we have this little handy dandy bag. So each player, that means the John player. I just need to fetch them. They are by the side. I wasn't sure if I'm going to need them or not. So they said we need to throw in the red one. And since we are playing with little John and Robin Hood, we are just going to throw these three in. I presume we are going to draw it from the back. So I'm going to shake it really well. Just keep it over here. And uh, let's see what we need to do next. So. Throw the red disc into the bag too. Okay, now place the book's gold ribbon here between pages eight and nine, because you see the, the book has two ribbons, a gold and a red one. And that basically is helping us, I presume, to remember where we are in the book so we can continue our story, stuff like that. So the golden ribbon, so I'm just gonna leave this one here and the golden ribbon needs to go over here. Don't look at this. Uh, I figured out I will not be able to mask all of this. So you're going to probably see some stuff. So have that in mind. Okay, so we place the gold ribbon over here uh, between pages eight and nine. Important, if you are unsure during the adventure where to continue reading from, always go back to where the gold ribbon currently lies. Now continue reading the page nine. And we are on the page nine. During a round of the game, you draw all discs from the bag one by one. They uh, are piled on the mill wheel, bottom right of the game board. The color of the draw disc indicates whose turn is it. 
So bottom right, wheel mill. Where is the wheel mill? I guess this is the wheel mill. What else can it be, right? Okay, so let's see what uh, what else. Okay, any player now draws the first disc from the bag, immediately read what happens for the corresponding color. So any player, that means us, we now have to draw one from the bag. I'm just gonna keep the bag off screen. It's way easier that way, you know. And we have the red one first. And the red one says, dark events, the sheriff of Nottingham. And I guess this one goes over here, I presume. And uh, it says, the sheriff of Nottingham gazes over the landscape. Early this morning, he sent out a few guards for security. For today is a special day. Now flip over the oval tiles. Six. Bottom at the river. Bottom at the river. Okay, so we need to flip this one over. Oh, it's another guard. Of course it is. And uh, 12. Top in the forest. And tile 12. Top in the forest. I guess those are the guards that are looking for us. And we need to be very careful to avoid them as possible now throw one violet cube into the bag any player then draws the next disc from the bag okay so we need to throw some cubes i do have a bunch of cubes over here and we are going to throw the violet cube in the bag so let's just take it this is really weird we are throwing a cubes and ovals into the bag i mean you can differentiate them pretty easily what they are and it says that uh, now the players draw the next disc from the bag and then we draw a uh, next disc from the bag and it's going to be a green one i almost said red one again why not sure why okay so the green one says you breathe in the cold and wet forest air of sherwood it's been years since you were last here way back before the crusades since then you have been plagued by weird dreams of suffering and fire and a horned creature it's as though this shape has been summoning you here we have a task now it says task you must now move towards the shape 90 center of the forest then draw the next disc so i need to move to the center of the forest shape 90 where is the shape 90 come on it doesn't this this doesn't help really much so let's see okay green move toward the shape center of the forest then draw the next disc okay we need to move oh 90 it's over here it's a weird old man and uh, yeah we're going to just take a normal moves for now because we have no idea what's going on so i have moved and then i will return these to the back back to me and i continue reading then we draw the next next disc and next disc of course is little john it's a blue disc so <clears throat> so we draw it like that and it says blue the gallows are approaching one of little john's teammates now continues reading what happens on a page 11 and uh, basically that's us we are going to read what's on page 11 because we are his teammate and we are going to decide for him you are not the only one that has been captured by the sheriff in the last few weeks the crown collected high taxes whoever couldn't pay their taxes was considered to be a traitor and was persecuted and their belongings seized the residents of nottingham have lived in constant fear and have little hope by little hope for better days place the rounded barred figure on space 17 of the banner of hope on the game board so let me just take this one to remember where did i left off and i need to find something so wait for a second okay got it we have some all kinds of different components i'm not going to show you all of them i'm just going to introduce them as they show up so this one goes as they said on the space 17 of this uh, banner of hope on the game board as all of this goes through your mind 
You try to free yourself from your chain again, but still you cannot move. If you, if like you, if like you, a player is currently captured by a guard, they cannot move. Therefore, you do not use your long playing figure and can at least and can at least save your strength. This means that you may now throw one white cube into the bag. So we are going to throw one white cube into the bag. I think I needed to throw one for myself because I didn't use the the fast movement. Let me just quickly check out. Save strength when moving. If you decide not to use long figure when moving, you save strength and may throw one white cube into the bag. Yeah, I did that as a as a Robin Hood, so I'm gonna throw another one of this white into the bag. And uh, let's continue and see what happens. Because little John can't move, of course, he saves strength, he throws uh, white cubes into the bag. I presume that white cubes are good stuff. Okay, and player now draws the next disc from the bag and reads what happens where the gold ribbon lies. But we don't have any more. So we are going back to the gold ribbon and it says if there are no more discs in the bag, the first round ends, then continue reading on page 12. Okay, let's go to the page 12 because the round is over. We don't have any more of these tokens to pull out from the bag. So congratulations, you have mastered the first round. Well, that was easy. Uh, throw all disc used in the last round back into the bag. Important, place the gold ribbon of the book here between pages 12 and 13. I could have assumed that, but let's do it like this and then throw all these three discs back into the bag come on i'm gonna need more hands for this one okay so they are in the bag i'm going to shuffle them a little bit and now let's see what happens important place the gold ribbon we already did that turn sequence the following rule is particularly important and therefore also depicted at the top of the game board now i presume they're thinking about this thing over here it says uh, now take a look at it together the sequence must always be carried out in the following order okay so we always first need to move then if we didn't play the long one we saved strength we put the white cube back in there and then we need to perform one of the two actions examine or defeat so we need to do either do examine or defeat and then we have this thing over here which it doesn't say what it does in a book so we're gonna leave it be uh, in the next round you will get to know these two actions we shall start with examine oh so they're explaining the examine the new rule is if during the course of the adventure the standing figure of a player touches a tile with while with a question mark on it they may examine it that's what i was previously mentioning if you touch some of these tiles you can examine them you can uh, flip them over for example i'm now on this tile 35 over here so i can use an examine i presume and just uh, flip it and see what i find there so the examine works like this you will you you will see a small number on the relevant tile this corresponds to the page number here in the book a teammate therefore reads to you what happens on the given page so example if i want to do this 35 i will just go on the page 35 and read what happens over there and uh, if i uh, that's uh, that's the exam rule and uh, important a tile without a question mark cannot be examined oh oh that's really important because you need to have this like question mark over here to be able to interact like for example this question mark over here or this question mark so you can examine stuff like this and this but uh, this tile that i was telling about you can't examine it because it does not have the question mark that's really important to remember when examining you must also know which adventurer you are currently playing reminder you are currently playing the escape now continue reading on a page 13 so we are now currently playing the escape i guess the little john we need to save him for some reason uh, and uh, it told us that we need to go to this guy over here so 
Any player now draws the first disc from the bag, read what happens for the corresponding color. And now we proceed as usual. I'm just not gonna keep this book over here like so. It's way easier to read it like this and then draw from the bag. Okay, so first disc is the green one. And the green one says, you suddenly feel a piercing look. Turning around, you notice a figure bent and seemingly ancient. They are wearing a decoration of feathers and animal skulls on their head. You, they beckon you over. Now, my task is, in this turn, you must now touch and examine the unknown shape, shape tile, 90, that's that tile over there, with your second standing figure. This means that a teammate then continues reading to you what happens on a page 90. But since we are playing alone, I'm going to be reading everything and my mouth is already dried. I guess I should have prepared some water, but we are going to power through it for now. Okay, so I need to be able to touch figure 90 this turn, which now looks like I am not able to reach. So I guess I'm going to have to use my running to be able to reach him. Let me just check out if I can do that. So if I do it like this and like this, I am barely touching the edge of it, which means I will use it and uh, I have no other options, which means I will not put the white cube in the bag for whatever reason. And uh, then we continue reading the page 90 of the book and let's see what happens while we reach this guy. The Guardian of the Forest. Continue reading the appropriate page depending on which adventurer you are currently playing. So we are playing the escape, we need to go to page 91. So uh, which adventure, not adventurer. So we are playing the adventure, the escape. So we need to read page 91. Well, this is really interesting. The figure greets you with a rough, weak voice. Robin of Luxley, you left a long time ago, but now you are finally back. Not a day too early, the whole of England is in danger. What is that supposed to mean, you ask? A storm is coming and it will begin here, here in Nottingham. The figure retreats into the undergrowth. Retreats into the undergrowth. I will tell you more when we see each other again, but you must be careful, young Robin. As soon as the sheriff knows that you are here, he will hunt you down. He already caught you, your old friend Little John. If you hurry, you may still be able to save him. Now flip over the guardian tile. Now I flip over the guardian tile and he is no longer visible. I was somewhat like standing like this, barely touching it. Attention. If a player is standing on the same clearing as a face up guard or and the red disc is then drawn from the bag, the guard will capture the player. Now the clearing uh, it's depicted here in the book. As I said, I'm going to show you this as little as possible. But the clear, clearing is basically all this uh, light green thing. So, you know, this is like shadows. This is okay. Mm -hmm. But this is clearing. So if there is guard, I presume the guard is up here. So if this guard flips, then he sees me. He will, let, mm, let's see what he would do if he sees me. Uh, he will capture the player. Uh, this means that a guard does not automatically capture you if you step on their clearing, but only if the red disc is drawn. Examples of clearing, as I already mentioned. Important, clearing also means the bright regions in the castle or in the village. So these are all clearings. This is clearing, this lighter section over here is clearing, this is all shadows. So I guess I can hide in shadows and all that. Note, in order to stay safe, a player must stand their standing figure fully in the shade. So we can't be, I'll just use this as an example, we can't be partially in the shade. We have to be like fully in the shade to be able to say that they can't see us. Any player now draws the next, the next disc from the bag and reads that what happens where the gold ribbon lies. And the gold ribbon is over here. And uh, let's see what the next... Uh, of these uh, discs will be and it's a red one luckily there is no guard over here 
which is really good, but that doesn't mean it won't show up. Red, dark events. From a distance, the sheriff can hear fanfares blaring and can't help but smile. Only he knows whose arrival they are announcing. The hope drops by two, so the hope drops to 15. Move the part to the left, of course. Now flip over the oval tile 7, left next to the castle gate. Oval tile 7 needs to be lifted. And it's another guard, of course. The guards are popping up everywhere. Uh, now throw one violet cube into the bag. Again, we need to throw one violet cube into the bag. And player then draws the next next discs from disc from the bag, and it's of course going to be a little John. Well, how insightful I am! And what we have for little John Blue? You try to defeat the guard. One of little John's teammates now continues reading what happens on page 14. Luckily, that's me. Little John's turn currently looks like this. Move, not possible, because he's still held captive. Save your strength, yes, therefore he may now throw one white cube into the bag. And we are going to do that. We are going to throw one white cube into the bag. And uh, what happens next? Perform one of the two actions. So we now have two actions to perform. Let's see what they are. You shall now learn the second action, defeat, which is quite simple. In order to defeat a guard, the player must touch the guard tile with their standing figure. The player then draws up to three cubes, one after the other from the bag. If they draw only violet cubes, they have unfortunately not defeated the guard, nothing else happens, the player may try again during their next turn. If they draw a white cube, the guard is defeated and they must immediately stop drawing cubes. The drawn cubes never go back into the bag but always to the supply of all wooden parts. Or other thing we can do is stop. Only continue reading here if little John has defeated the guard. Okay, so now we are trying to defeat the guard if possible. Just keep it like this. So as they said, we draw up to three cubes from the bag, one by one, and unless we draw a white cube, the guard will defeat us, so we need a white cube, preferably on a third draw, because then, I don't know, let's see what happens. Okay, first one is purple, so they don't go, they, are go, on, they go on the side, they will not go in the bag. So then we draw the second one, and it's a white cube which means we stopped drawing and we defeated the... Uh, if you draw a white cube, the guard is defeated. So we defeated the guard and we must stop immediately. So we now read what happens if we defeated the guard. If guard has been defeated, the guard tile is flipped over and you will see your reward. Plus one hope beneath the guard. Move the bar at one space to the right on the banner of hope accordingly. Okay, so what happens now is this guard is defeated, but once we take it out, oh my god, this is going to get damaged so heavily. Uh, we have a plus one on the banner of hope, so we move this on plus one, and the guard is not here anymore. So I guess we stand up now, we don't have to lie down. Banner of Hope accordingly, important if the guard is flipped face down again on the game board, also place one additional wooden hourglass on top of it so the guard doesn't return too quickly. The player places his figure back again so it's still touching the guard tile. Okay, so I'm a little confused about this rule, I'm gonna show it to you. So you see this. We have these hourglasses, but it says if the guard is flipped face down again on the game board. Also place, if the guard is flipped face down again. I mean, he's not flipped face down again. Over and you will see your reward. I guess we put an hour, I'm going to play like we put an hourglass on it. Because I presume that's what they were thinking about, so... He doesn't like come out right away and I'm going to 
do it like this so let's yeah let's do it like a side and I'm just gonna stand with the John over here so I presume that's how it happens okay let's continue reading uh, place the red ribbon here between pages 14 and 15 in case you want to read the rules for the defeat action later on and I just might because I just started playing and it's still not like firmly in my head so you know we're gonna put the red ribbon here and any player now draws the next next disc from the bag and reads what happens from where the gold ribbon lies okay so we need to go to the back to the gold ribbon and since we have all three of these up here if there are no more discs left in the bag second round ends then continue reading on page 16. okay let's see what page 16 has for us so it says well done you have mastered another round and have already learned the most important rules you should now take a breather for a moment and relax maybe you would like something to drink it's like they know i am i am like uh, thirsty so uh, i'm just gonna make a quick pause pause of few seconds and just going to go and get some water and i'll be right back and we got some water okay so now we need to figure out where we left off and you just saw my big nose on the camera okay so shall we continue let's go it says over here i'm not sure when does this end so i guess we're going to play until some chapter and just stop i believe this is this i don't know let's see how long it will take us and i'll see if we are going to stop or continue playing okay shall we continue let's go throw all discs used in the last round back into the bag so we put all this disc back into the bag and this book if only could like read a little bit oh, i'm going to destroy this if i push it any further so yeah uh, the last round back in the bag place six hour glasses on the bed and the book at the bottom of the game board bottom of the game bed aid and the book okay we need to put eight hour glasses six not eight six so we're just gonna put two and uh, two more and what is this this is even two more two more of these yay excellent okay let's see what we have next during the adventure there will be fewer and fewer hourglasses at the bad end if the last hourglass is removed from from there you have lost figures the hope in the land will also sink if the hope falls to zero you lose another hourglass from the bad end uh, we have a tip over here you may also defeat guards without being captured you can also make a conscious effort to defeat a guard see page 14 in, in this way you can increase the hope in the land and make a clearing safe for a while aim of this adventure is all of you must stand together in the same piece of shade anywhere outside the castle before the last hourglass has been removed from the bad end to achieve this, you must first fulfill the following tasks. Examine the game board to find a way for little John to leave the castle. Note, John can of course only reach the castle wall using the stairs and cannot simply jump from the castle walls. Additional task, if Maid Marion is in the game, she is not, she must examine Father Egbert as quickly as possible before she joins others in the shade. But since we don't have that, we only need to like uh, be together in a shade with uh, little John and and uh, Robin Hood, right? To achieve this, following that, little John to leave the castle. Uh -huh, examine. Okay, place the gold ribbon here between pages 16 and 17. Let's put the golden ribbon here, as it tells us to do so. Okay, and. And player now draws the disc from the bag. Read what happens for the corresponding color. Okay, so again, we are uh, in a need. We need to escape somehow. 
so there must be a way I guess going right through the gate is not possible I know we can examine stuff that has uh, question marks on it so I'm not really sure I maybe maybe we can go and examine this guy over here and for some strange re reason maybe little John can you know come here and just jump or something like that because anything in the castle oh oh wait a second check this out there's a question mark over here which means we can examine it if little john goes up here oops we are at 16 if little john goes up here and touches a little bit of this he can examine this thing over here which might be possible and in the meantime I think Robin Hood could maybe check out these mushrooms, see what they are. And yeah, this will be this will be really interesting. How are we going to be able to maybe defeat this guard still? I'm not seeing how we are going to get each other. Oh boy, this is going to be tough because I, this guard over here protects all of this thing. And uh, I can't just take my Robin Hood and run freely unless I pull his token first. That's what I'm thinking right now. But let's see who goes first. Let's mention that. Okay, Little John is going first. And as I said, I saw this thing over here and I believe this is the way for Little John to escape. Most certainly. Or this guy over here. So Robin Hood will go and check out this guy. But this guy can then capture me because he's in the clearing oh man how am i going to do this okay first of all let's play at little john so we are going to try and go upstairs i'm not going to run because i want i i'm definitely going to need to defeat some of these guards so i want to put some white cubes back in the back in this bag so I'm just going to go and do a slow movement thingy like this and then this all these things are removed let's just keep them down here and let's see who plays next oh I forgot to read what's the blue one it's little John turn after that draw the next disc yeah we are just basically now drawing discs and doing stuff okay the Robin Hood goes next and the Robin Hood is definitely going to explore this thing over here so first we need to move and I can probably reach that if I run but then oh because I didn't run with a little John I put the white cube in the bag okay so what can we do next what can we do next we can move two times over here and be very close to this maybe i can even get it by some string oh i barely touched i barely barely touched the little uh little edge of the of that tile so we are going to examine it and uh, we are going to remove this and uh, since we didn't use the the fast movement thing i am going to put one white cube into the baggie and let's see now we can do a examine so we are going to examine the tile 160 and that means that we need to read what's on a page 160 of the book let's see what that page offers for us mushrooms we are playing the escape so we need to read page 161 which is basically the next page at the edge of the forest you discover some magnificent porcini mushrooms and grab them you may now throw two white cubes into the bag now flip over the mushroom tile and player then draws the next disc from the bag so we earned two white cubes so we can fight easily when when the when the guards show up on the board on the board you know we are not currently in the shadows but if we are running in their clearings they can capture us but this way we can defeat them which is really good so we put two white cubes in the bag which i already did and now i draw a another disc and uh, 
where is it? Where is my red disc? It's here. I couldn't feel it in the bag. <laughs> so the, rest, the red disc shows up and the red disc says... Dark events. The sheriff notices a carriage decorated with gold approaching. Finally, he is here. Flip over the octagonal tile 24 at the very bottom of the forest. Octagonal. What's an octagonal? It's eight sides, right? 24. Okay, so th this one over here. 24. Oh, the carriage showed up. Really cool. The land now loses three hope. One, two, three. We lose three hope. Flip over the oval tiles. Three to the left of the castle wall. Number three. Yeah, the guards are going to show up everywhere right now. Oval tile, let's see. In tiles three and five in the village. Five in the village. Village, okay. Five, it's here. So we need to flip these tiles. Okay. Now what happens? Attention! If a player now stands on the same clearing as a face-up guard, they are captured and their figure is laid on the guard. The land then the land then immediately loses to hope. Luckily, we don't have any of that. And uh, remove the top hourglass from the bed end and from guard one castle courtyard. So from this guard and this guard, we remove two hourglasses. The guards are not flipped over automatically this way. Now throw one violet cube per player into the bag, then any player draws the next disc from the bag. So, as I was hoping for, for a better fight, uh, as you can see, there's some white. I'm not sure if I can look into this, but there's lots of white in there. So, if there are no more discs in the bag, the third round ends and continue reading on a page 18. So, let's go on a page 18 and see what happens next. Congratulations, you are already in the middle of a great adventure. Throw all discs used in the last round back into the bag. Throw a gray disc into the bag as well. So now we have a gray disc also. Wait, let me just fetch it where it is. It's over here with all the other discs. Okay, so we take all four of these discs and just throw them back in the bag. Shuffle them a little bit and uh, let's see what happens next. Now, a new rule. If the gray disc is drawn, it's the turn of any player of your choice. Decide together as a group, oh, me alone, uh, who that shall be. The dreams are beating and the fanfares, uh, the drums are beating and the fanfares are bl fanfares blare. Now flip over the carriage tile 24 at the bottom of the forest so it's no longer visible and also tile 25 in the castle courtyard. So this carriage is no, long, no longer visible for some reason, but I presume it just arrived. Oh, come on. Did some of these tiles get out really, really hard and I'm damaging them with my barely any nails so I have to figure out a way to get them out something like a little plastic or something like to go underneath them you know wait let me just see what I have on my hands right now I'm gonna probably need a knife or something so let's take oh let's do it like this I think I think this would be of a help so if I have this thing over here and I really flatten it out like a piece of paper, maybe I can go underneath it. No, no I can't. Come on! I need something that's firm but that I can... Oh, I see I already damaged it a little bit and it kills me. It kills me because I really want to save this game. I, 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 I presume you can restart it and I really don't want to damage it beyond the repair. I have something but not here in a studio that would be of a great use for this one. So just wait for a second, I'm going to get a knife. However horrible this is, this sounds, it's way better than this. So I'm just gonna go and fetch the knife.
And we are back. I have a knife with little blue handle because I have a blue shirt today. So, you know, they're really like matching. Almost the exact same color. Now, this is this looks horrible, but trust me, it's way better than what I was doing so far and prying them with my nails. This is way easier to pick them up like this. So, yes, as I presumed, oh my God, I'm all... I just ran for like two flights of stairs and I'm out of breath. Okay, so the carriage showed up in here. Let's see what happens next. Since King Richard left for the Crusades, the land has been ruled by his younger brother, Prince John. That very same man now climbs out of the magnificent carriage. The Sheriff of Nottingham bows deeply before the prince. But all little John is thinking, Prince John in Nottingham? What does this mean? And we have to continue on a page 19. Info. The adventure ends as soon as all of you stand together in the same piece of shade. Okay, so now we are know where the, where the end of this uh, video will be. Outside the castle or the last hourglass has been removed from the bad end. You must then read how this adventure ends on page 20. Okay, so we don't want a bad end. We want to end it on a good note. So we need to stay in the same shade, which means I will probably need to defeat these two guards while I run from here because this guard is on this clearing so I guess we can avoid him and I hope the guard will not show up over here it can it probably is guard over here and I will just run and try to defeat this guy and with him this guy and meet like in this shadow that's the plan for now okay so now place the gold ribbon here between the pages 18 and 19 okay and we continue drawing disc and now players draw the first disc from the bag and read what happens and all that. Okay, so let's take first disc is the green disc. And that's really good because I can run over past this guard and completely ignore it, ignore him. Because uh, the red disc, uh, if I'm on a clearing while the rest red disc is drawn, then I will be captured. Otherwise, I'm good. So I'm just going to probably run like crazy. And I have to use my running thing. And I will just run past him. And he will not even know I was here. He didn't notice me because I was that good. I just ran. Okay, so... Uh, as soon as the green is i have to draw a next one and it's a red one it's dark events thing oh i don't like this <clears throat> the land now loses three hope one two i lose three hope i could have maybe fight this guy you know to boost my hope up but what can you do uh, if a player now stands on the same clearing as a face up guard, they are captured and their figure is laid on the guard, the land then immediately lose to hope. Luckily that, that that's not happening. If several players are standing on the clearing, one guard can only ever capture one player, the one closest to them. Remove the top hourglass from the bad ends and from the guards if applicable. We don't have any guards, but we have the bad end, so we are going to remove it. Should the hope now be zero, another hourglass is removed from the bad end. Now throw one violet cube per player into the bag and draw the next disc. Okay, so we need to act fast. We have two more cubes in here. I guess we need to act like really, really fast. I couldn't put the white cube because I used running. And the next one is little John. Little John plays next and he will just go now this is a i need to check out the movement what if i want to move less you know but i don't want to use like the big movement stuff let's see you are allowed special cases if you only want to travel a very short distance you okay so it says you have to use them but i i guess I guess they made it that way. Uh, if I put the run, I can use this one. So yeah, I'm just gonna run. 
I believe I'm playing correctly. I can't just, you know, put two of these and then decide to end like somewhere at the middle, like here. But with two of these, I can overshoot this tile and I really want to examine it, examine it because I think that's the way to save the John to escape the castle. So you're just going to put him here like so. Then we are going to remove these two. And since we run, we don't put anything in the bag. And uh, now I can do a examine of the tile 111. Oh man, again, it doesn't take out really nicely. So I'm just going to use my knife and pry it out. Oh boy, this will, okay, yeah, I damaged the board a little bit. That was, that's inevitable, it's going to happen. And since uh, this is uh, 111, we need to read 111 and see how we can examine and interact with this one but i guess we can use the rope you know we just got rope to get down let's see so we are playing the escape which means x continue reading on the appropriate page depending on which adventure you are currently playing the escape says x we don't what's the x why Oh no, sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's. Uh, I need to read the page 111. I'm reading the wrong page. <coughs> I apologize. You may only continue reading here if you have the rope object, and we do have the rope object. Move the cube of your color from the image of the rope back to the supply. Wait. Move the cube of your color. Move the cube of your color, cube of my color. Okay, so I have a cube of my color, but why would it be over there? That's really strange. Do we have the rope object? We don't, I guess we, we then, I guess we don't do that. Hmm, this is really weird now. What? is happening okay i am a little bit confused oh we have like a rope a sword and this one over here i guess i presume we need to put an a like a cube over there and something but you may only continue reading here if you have the rope object but we don't have the rope object and but we could be because there's a question mark we could have interrupted with it so i guess i did everything correctly okay so i guess this was the wrong move to do and uh, but the turn is over we need to draw the next one and it's a gray one and we need to figure out i guess this is not the way to to escape with uh, with little john i was most certain that this was the way to escape but i guess it is not other thing that is touching the castle and has uh, something to do with it is maybe this guy maybe i was right when i was thinking this is the oh i moved the board a little bit maybe this is the guy that we need to go for and i can even touch him from the wall he's touching like his tile is touching a little bit of the wall which means i can go up here and touch it and probably jump on it Oh my god, that was the thing that I needed to do, most certainly. Okay, so I'm just going to run the wall and trying to get over there. That was really silly of me. And I will go with the Robin Hood over here and maybe meet both of them in these shadows over here. And in the meantime, maybe attack some of these guys, you know, and have fun with them because if this reaches zero, then we are oh, okay. Okay, so we don't have the rope, the sword, or any of these items, which means that uh, we can't use this one. We just examined it. And uh, wait, let me just check out. Do I need to flip it back? I believe not. Oh, oh. Uh, the thing is, I can't flip this tile until I read the stuff first. I was just checking the book, sorry for the being silent and everything. And 
prying open with knife all this so it says if we have this rope thing over here if we got that then we can flip this tile and continue reading but since we don't have it i mean it was clear that okay so i kind of spoiled it a little bit but what can you do okay so the gray one says that we can play with whoever we want and it's of course going to be little john and little john is going to run run like the wind so he's going to run like this and then something like this i presume the guards will show up over here and probably attack us but oh i just moved that guy from here i should have used this one but it's still okay so little john moved uh if there is no more back in the bag and draw next so we just put them all back in the bag and let's hope that we win before the game ends let's just shake it a little bit and let's see what's next coming up first one the gray one hmm again i'm thinking little john is going to be that one because he really needs to cover a lot of distance way more than the robin hood so i'm just gonna run we're not going to put anything in the bag so i'm just gonna run like crazy i almost reached the shadows unfortunately he's not fully in the shadows which means that it's like they knew it's like they drew that for the same for the, for that reason so yeah uh he moved so he used the we don't put any white in a bag and let's see what the other disc please don't be a red disc i need i need robin hood to finish over here so i can beat this guy so i can move this a little bit because i'm i fear that we might lose we have a bad end ah the red disc come on the bag is filling with purple cubes and that's not what i'm liking yet so dark events the land loses three hope of course because we need to do that if a player now stands on the same clearing as a face up guard which is not uh we're gonna lose two and more hope and should the hope be at zero now throw one violet cube per player into the bag and since we are playing two players so two cubes go in the bag and remove the top hourglass from the bed end come on into the bag draw the next disc and the next next discs are little john and robin hood which is really good so i'm going to take a robin hood and i'm just going to move two and stay in that clearing because i want to fight that guy and i want to populate my bag with more white cubes because we need them so i put the white cube in here and uh, then we draw the next one or the last one and that's of course little john and let's see if we can reach without running the i think we can i think we yeah we definitely can so it's like this and then it's like this let me just check it really quickly so if i put it like this and then like this like this and i barely nicked it on the very edge and that was my bald head that you just saw for a second okay so we reached a wagon 80 and we are going to read the number 80 and see what happens so Number 80 says, continue reading on the appropriate, depending, okay, the escape, we need to read page 81. Hey you, go, get out of my way. The farmer then shields his eyes from the setting sun. Wait a second, I do know you. You played here in, you played here in Sherwood Forest as a kid. He laughs out loud. Do you want me to give you a ride? You may now move your figure to the tile 62 in the center of the forest if you want to. If you want to. The decision is yours. Either way, then flip over the farmer tile. So that was the correct answer right away. 
So we can move on a tile 62. I, uh, any player now draws the next disc from the back. Okay, so figure the tile 62. Tile 62 in the center of the forest. In the center of what forest? Where is the tile 62? Oh, it's here. 62. Tiles. So we can move from here. He will drive us over here. And we are going to be in the shadows, of course. And then we need to flip this guy and of course to flip it I need my trusty knife to pry it out because I don't have nails and they are gone which is kind of not good because Robin Hood is right here he was here he would maybe probably be able to run over here much faster but it is what it is okay so the merchant or whoever this guy was gave us a ride and uh, we are done as uh, you can see all of these are played out so let's see if now we can just don't be a red one i mean okay a green one yes yes we need a green one and we need to run around the forest if i'm not mistaken we can't run through these so we need to run around and we need to find ourselves in the same shadow so let's see to win the scenario so but there, on this clearing there is no guards over here so that's really good which means i can easily just run like this and like this and be almost in the shadows and i will probably do that once i get the gray component out so next one plays the red one of course the red one is playing the next so as again we lose one two three we lose three hope if a player now stands on the same clearing as a face-up guard and there is no face-up guard in this clearing then uh, we could uh, use some uh we are nothing happens because there's nothing here remove the top hourglass from the bad end we still have two more to go should the hope now be at zero now throw one violet cube per player we throw in some violet cubes and continue drawing the next disc and the next di next disc is little john and little john will just do a super short small move oh wait he could interact with this while we are here why not why not use his move to see what this 64 this there's like a bee nest so maybe we should not do that but let's do it let's see what happens okay so i'm standing here and i want to interact with the 64. so let's see what 64 has for us your gaze falls on an old rotten tree a bee's nest with fine honey hangs from it you may now throw one white cube into the bag important tile 46 is not flipped over it can therefore be examined again so we put one white cube into the bag i mean it's probably the end but i'm still going to do it just because i don't know what's going to happen next attention you may only continue reading here if you have the x object otherwise your turn ends here and the next disc is drawn we don't have x object I don't know that's the new object that's not over here maybe this rope thing was something different okay still uh what it uh what it says uh we don't have x we don't continue reading that's that we played our turn the last the last disc of course is the robin hood and uh it's the gray one and it will be for the robin hood and uh he will move over here and stay in these shadows like this and he will again also examine this one and put one white cube into the bag just because maybe this does not reset maybe it stays like that throughout the games so i just want to populate it with more white cubes as possible as many white cubes as possible the adventure ends as soon as all of you stand together in the same piece of shade and that's right now uh, outside the castle or at the last hourglass has been removed but we are outside the castle in the shadow you must read this uh, book's adventure end at page 20 so this basically is the end of the first adventure and let's read the very end of it okay 
Uh, are you standing? Okay, so we now have to check out uh, what the end is. Are you standing together in the same pieces of shape? Then continue reading here. Yes, we do. The friends hugged one another. The escape was a success. Congratulations, you have won. Back together at last, whispered Robin. Yeah, and I'm like shouting. <laughs> yes, but I have troubling news, replied little John, and he told of the arrival of the prince. Robin didn't know much about Prince John, but what he do but what was he doing here in, in an unimportant country like Nottinghamshire? Inevitably, he thought of the warning from the guard in the forest. A storm is coming and it will begin here, here in Nottingham. Well, we will solve this puzzle soon enough. We must first get out of the sight. Let's go. My family's farm is not far from here. Of course, this was just the first of many adventures and the real challenge still lies ahead of you. Right now, you have to carry out the instructions in the box below. In the box below. Okay, yeah. I'm, he means in this box over here. So you know how to proceed next time. The next adventure. Leave all the tiles as they are in the game board. Now place both ribbons between pages 22 and 23. Both ribbons. Okay. Let me just quickly do that. 21. So we put it at 22 and 23. If you are not continuing to play right now, which we are not because I have some other stuff I need to do, throw all the wooden parts into the bag and put the bag into the box. Carefully take the 8 piece game board apart again so that the tiles stay where they are. Stack the game board parts on top of the one another and slide them into the slider case horizontally. Yeah, that is that. We are done. So we managed to rescue little John. I was tricked with that rope. I, I kind of spoiled it a little bit for myself uh, for the future things, but uh, I shouldn't have went for the first hunch and try to figure out if the, I would need to jump into the cart of that guy. So yeah, because it, it just touch barely touches the 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 itself, the little one, the, the notch of the castle thing. Yeah, um, overall, I am so super interested right now where this will game lead us next it's really interesting it's really fun i jumped this into this without knowing what will what's going to happen what what the game is about it just look very interesting interesting to me that you can flip these tiles you know examine stuff change the board and all that so yeah uh, that was uh, that was episode one uh, and uh, join me next time when we are going to uh, watch episode two and uh, yeah, if uh, you consider maybe supporting me on Patreon, you can probably see some of these in advance because I always publish them there because they are released into the wild onto the channel and you support uh, the channel that way, which uh, I do appreciate a lot. So do check out my Patreon. If you are not able to support me there, there consider subscribing. If you are not, that also helps out a lot, a lot. Leave me a comment. Have you played this one? What's your experience without spoilers? I want this game to be spoiled for you and not you spoil it for me. So yeah, this is the first one. This one will probably, as I mentioned, go live instantly, but all of the others will show up on the Patreon first. So if you want to follow up how all of these went and you can't wait, uh, do consider supporting me there. And uh, that is that. Thank you all for watching and uh, until next time. Pozdrav.